Um, great, good afternoon and thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Max Hout, I'm a co-founder and CEO at Livestream. Um, and today I'll be talking to you about how can live video or can live video help uh, democracy. Um, we were talking about the topic of today and certainly live stream, we didn't start the company really with this, uh, with this idea of uh, helping democracy. Uh, but it's certainly been something that has surprised me and uh, I will illustrate it today with four real life examples that I've witnessed uh, in live streaming over the last four years. Um, firstly, a quick disclaimer, uh, live stream is a live streaming platform and it's a democratic platform. So it means that anybody from a high-end brand in large events or so an event like today can basically sign up and use our service to live stream. Um, we don't do anything that is not legal, but so long as if it's legal in the United States, in a local country, uh, we let anybody broadcast uh, their message to the masses on our platform. And today I'll be using four examples, and I want to clarify that it's by no means an endorsement um, by Livestream or myself. So back to the question, can live video help democracy? So again, I'll show you four examples, and um, hopefully you'll be able to answer that, uh, that question um, by yourself at the end. Um, the first point is actually the opposite. Uh, if you think about live video as live television, um, it has basically been helping uh, propaganda since the 20s, since its invention. And it actually has been helping propaganda exclusively because um, until 2007, uh, nobody could really on their own broadcast live uh, to the masses. So if you look at um, television and you compare it, everybody has heard about you know, how Twitter and, and blogs and everything uh, <laughs> have been um, you know, helping in the Arab uh, uprisings and other. Uh, but very few talk about, there's been very few talk about how live video has been playing a part role into that. And as far as I'm concerned, if you look at blogs and uh, social media, they really are the democratization of the printing press um, and to some extent the telephone. But if you look at um, what the live streaming platform have done when we launched in 2007, Livestream was one of the companies that launched the same year and allowed anybody with a webcam or with a camera and a laptop to basically go live. Not just to go live like on Skype to someone else, but to go live to 10,000 people, 100,000 people, and we even, even have case where it's millions of people. So what I personally believe is that, you know, compared to traditional print media where you need a level of ed education and you need to be willing to be engaged, Television is so easy to consume, it's so entertaining that live television is the ultimate medium to either uh, spread propaganda or to spread an activist uh, message. Um, so um, in 2007, as I was saying, we really enabled um, anybody to create their own live TV station. And this is actually uh, one of the member, we'll come back to that, it's one of my example of the Occupy Wall Street uh, team downtown uh, who's using a webcam and a laptop um, and is part of a full production team that is producing the Occupy Wall Street Global Revolution channel uh, on live stream. So the first of my four example uh, is one that probably none of you know here, um, but I'll come back as to why it's, uh, it's an interesting one. Um, it was a two-day protest uh, for, with a very similar agenda to the uh, Occupy Wall Street or the Occupy movement uh, in Plaza del Sol in Madrid, Spain. And the event organizer had the chance to meet him, um, Vlad, and uh, I captured a little iPhone video. And uh, it was really the first time that I personally learned the impact of live video for somebody trying to organize a protest or a movement. And uh, I'll first let him say it in his own word, and I'll summarize um, that. All right, so the first time we used a uh, live stream channel, like, we watched a, a big live stream channel, was uh, for Spanish Revolution in Madrid. We watched this channel for Spanish Revolution. So and the problem we faced at the time uh, in the movement at that point was that all of corporate media was uh, basically presenting what was happening as just a bunch of homeless people, what they call the parrot floaters, the food and the dog people, people who don't do any work, they just play the food and hang out with their dog. But they've taken over the squares. And it was just a major like, public nuisance. And the first broadcast was basically went viral. We did a f General Assembly is very long. It usually goes for four to five hours. But within two hours, we started to broadcast it. Uh, uh, it got picked up by Twitter, by uh, a number of different blogs, social sites. And eventually, some smaller TV stations started rebroadcasting it. So the media blockade was, at that moment was broken. And like, millions of people throughout Spain suddenly saw it. 
So what, um, what Vlad is saying and you know, what he explained to me, that's when the penny dropped, he explained that you know, the, 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 the propaganda of the national media in Spain wouldn't let the message out. And even though there were some photos and some text on Twitter, the message wasn't going out. And in reality, they were not bums. They were actually, you know, young Spaniard, intellectual Spaniard that were sitting in the square in the General Assembly and were debating, you know, the future of Spain and their agenda. And by putting a live stream camera and bringing it on livestream.com, uh, they were able to go viral on Twitter and Facebook to a point that a few, you know, tens of thousands of people, maybe a hundred thousand people saw it. But what was more important is that they were able to force the media to then broadcast and rebroadcast the feed and show the true story. And um, we'll come back. Uh, this was a Vlad, Vlad Tejberg, Tejberg, sorry, um, and he has a New Yorker, you know, uh, illustration. And we'll come back to as to why he has one of these um, illustrations. Um, the next event, um, it's um, a lot of a, a much harder event because uh, people uh, died, was the Freedom Flotilla in June 2010. And um, here you can see this boat that was part of a flotilla, this is the main boat, uh, that as part of a, a humanitarian movement, or some people say humanitarian, uh, was bringing aids to Gaza uh, from Turkey. Um, why I'm bringing this up is what was amazing is that on this boat they built a full television studio. So they had about 12 cameras, they had a full mixing producer environment, and they had a full on TV satellite at the top. And they started to broadcast on the Friday um, the journey from Turkey all the way uh, to Gaza. Um, it was downlinked uh, in Turkey and streamed on live stream where we saw record viewer number way before any national media was talking about this um, at that time. Um, what's interesting is that they were able to tell their side of the story uh, using live video and they were able to broadcast all the way up to the point where um, the, uh, the, the tragic event unfolded when uh, because of the blockade the Israeli commandos raided the boats uh, and people unfortunately got killed. But this is going, I'm going to show you a video that was broadcast live on live stream and picked up by national media around the world, including Al Jazeera. Um, and that was made possible because the democratization of both the production equipment and the broadcasting. So this is the actual footage um, that was on live stream um, as the commandos basically arrived. And they broadcast for three days before that live continuously uh, with their jacket inside the boat um, and certainly were able to uh, not um, with a, a expected conclusion but get their message across. Uh, interestingly the New York Times actually had a front page story where they actually talk about the impact of video uh, in this type of, um, uh, of a debate you could say or tragic event. Uh, what happened is that the Israeli forces issued YouTube video of their point of view from their camera of what had happened and then the, uh, the, the protesters or the, the people from the flotilla issued their own video from the live stream uh, that they published and this really aimed to shape opinion and brought both perspectives. Obviously we're not endorsing either or giving opinion but from a news point of view it brought both perspectives and the democratization uh, of video and giving the ability for the protesters to have it um, helped in that opinion debate. Uh, the third example, uh, and we'll get to the fourth um, in a second, uh, is an equally tragic story that um, uh, you know we've kind of lived through a live stream. Uh, Mohammed Nabus was um, a live stream uh, producer based in Benghazi in a stronghold in Libya. And uh, as you'll see in the next video, he, um, he was producing a channel that was broadcasting uh, basically the square in Benghazi using satellite technology and really showing to the world, you know, hey, we are really there, it's a real revolution, and uh, Gaddafi is not taking us down. Um, this was very important. Unfortunately, he was shot uh, doing one of his reports uh, that he was doing in the field by a sniper um, a few months uh, before the uprising, a few, uh, you know, six months back. So um, that was one of the articles that he was uh, tragically um, shot um, and we worked with his wife to uh, give her control of the channel that, that she still managed today. Um, this was the channel um, and as you can see, you'll see in the next video, um, they were reaching um, you know, up to about 80,000 concurrent viewers and a few hundred thousand viewers a day that were able to see the square in Benghazi, see that it's live, 
uh, and then chat at the same time. And this was important not only for um, the world and the protesters to see, but uh, NPR and other major media were able to, through the channel, get in touch with Mohammed and start to really help telling the story. And you can see again the theme of live streaming helping bringing the news to the, to the, to the major media. So this is uh, the next uh, video we'll see. <laughs> their production studio. Check, 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 hello. If you can't hear me, he is coming Benghazi, no doubt. I have seen it myself with my own eyes. Right now, I was in an area called Hayy Dulaar, a Dulaar area. And he has bombed it. He has bombed the area, all of that area has no nothing. I mean, no, even a camp, nothing. So this was his, um, his last message, tragically. Um, but it shows you how he was able to report uncensored directly from the field uh, because they had a very small, low quality internet connection and he was able to report live uh, to the world. Um, the previous footage were actually from Al Jazeera that sent the reporter there to uh, tell a story. My next story and my final um, example in making my case will um, or does live video help or can help democracy. Uh, is the Occupy Wall Street uh, movement, um, or the Occupy movement as a whole. Um, here you actually see a photo that was taken a month back, or a few weeks back, um, of the media center of Occupy Wall Street. And uh, this is the media team, um, and um, we'll, um, we'll, we'll explain to you uh, who they work for in a second, but this is the media team, they're using the live stream studio, that's actually one of our product, and they assemble a lot of video feed and broadcast live, uh, to the Occupy Wall Street Global Revolution channel. I'll be showing you the, the metrics and the number of that channel at the end, and I think that, that will be my uh, concluding point. Um, but if you remember, we saw Vlad, and actually the video you just saw at the beginning, I captured it this week in New York. Um, because actually Vlad uh, exported his success with live streaming um, in, uh, in Spain. That's how I learned of the Spanish uh, event. Uh, and is actually the leader of the Global Revolution channel. The Global Revolution movement or the Occupy movement is not structured, uh, but there was a piece in the New Yorker that you can read there, but um, you know, they basically uh, credit him for being in charge um, of the Occupy movement and being uh, one of the father that is really leading it. Um, interestingly, he's a 39-year-old trader and he was a trader before. Um, but um, the channel, as you can see, is another channel on livestream.com. Uh, but this has now spawned into about 60 different Occupy channel in all of the different cities around the world that are using live streaming to, you know, to tell their message directly to the people. And some of this is also being rebroadcast um, on uh, global media. So I'll be showing you a video of Vlad again talking about how they are basically producing this channel just using a few thousand dollars of equipment and volunteers that you saw in the previous photo. Well, the setup right now is, is pretty very bad. We're actually mixing, uh, this is mostly to mix the global channel. We have a similar setup for the New York channel right now. So we're pulling up whatever feeds or whatever videos are coming from the internet, and we're basically mixing them together. We, 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 we're grabbing whatever is happening from whatever part of the world, and we're feeding it into the channel. And sometimes we'll go on and we explain what's going on. So Vlad, um, this was actually from uh, the other media center they have on Broadway, and there they run everything. So they have reporter using live stream, um, which I'll show again uh, with Wi-Fi card and cameras and then uh, they are beaming back to our virtual studio different feeds and then he's editing them but also he spent a lot of time um, out there. So my last video will really be a, a little showcase of how they are doing it there followed by um, some footage, some actual footage that was live streamed from the Brooklyn Bridge arrest so they, um, they went on the Brooklyn Bridge and stopped the traffic and there were hundreds of arrests I believe. Um, as well as uh, another set of arrests where they were able to stream with a mobile phone from the police wagon after being interested, uh, being arrested, sorry. This is live I'm stream doing. has really helped us bring the people's stories to the public in an unvarnished, unfiltered way. It lets us run around with laptops and wireless cards and show everyone exactly what's happening so that there's no chance for the corporate media to simply ignore everything 
or rather we give them an alternative. And we also help make it true that when people say the whole world is watching, technically we can make that true using live stream. Right from the Paddy Wagon. And Boss of Nose. Yeah, just shot of that. So you can see um, how they're able to even change the story. The first footage was uh, on the Brooklyn Bridge and they were actually shouting to the cops, there are 10,000 people watching right now, be careful at what you're doing. Um, and actually after they were replaying it, it went to 20, 30, 40,000 viewers. But when it actually happened live, there were 10,000 people behind that laptop and in, uh, in that camera. Um, so let me share with you some number of one Occupy Movement channel, the Global Revolution channel, which is the main one for Occupy Wall Street that Vlad runs. So basically so far, since the beginning of the uh, movement, uh, they have reached 11 million unique viewers. About 90% of these people are in America. Um, they have streamed, so this, when somebody comes onto a stream, they, they, are, they count as one stream, 65 million streams, and viewers are spending 16 minutes on average. So that means that people are watching for hours during the day, and some are watching for a couple of minutes. And in total, uh, they have streamed on live stream 1 billion, 40 million viewer minutes. And so if you want to talk about this specific event, this specific channel, and the impact of having a billion, uh, 40 million minutes, having people consume that to, for them to bring their message across, hopefully you'll agree uh, with me that live video can help democracy in the future. Thank you.